For many students, losing access to school buildings during the COVID-19 pandemic can mean losing community of support. Joining us now from Texas is the president and CEO of Communities and Schools, Ray Saldana. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Well, great to be here. I, you know, you work to keep the kids in school, the at-risk kids in school. Now that there's no physical building for them to go to, how are you handling this in the time of the pandemic? Yeah, so it's a really good question, uh, not just for organizations like ours who work in schools, uh, but also for those teachers who have built such strong relationships uh, with their students. For us, the work is really about ensuring that we are supporting all those things that happen around a student's life uh, that don't happen in the academic classroom, things that may keep them from learning, barriers that happen at home, uh, relationships that we develop in schools. Uh, now we're practicing all of those things outside of the school walls traditionally. So just because schools have closed, uh, that does not mean the work of communities and schools in Chicago has stopped. In fact, uh, it likely is going to have to ramp up even more as we think about the disruption to routine and normalcy that it is for some of our young people who are living on the edge of economic instability and how close that is for just a emotional uh, storm that can exist when schools eventually reopen and these students are coming back to us. It is really depending on those relationships that we have built uh, with those students in our organization for the last decade or so, uh, ensuring that that relationship is what will really compel that student to stay on a path. But Ray, uh, how, does, how does that look? I mean, are you contacting them with phone calls? Um, are there virtual visits? How does it actually look, the support that you guys are offering? Yeah, so if uh, you believe uh, necessity is the mother of invention, what we have tried to do is, you know, in the same way that uh, restaurants, retail are innovating their approach, we're innovating our own approach on how to continue our relationship with young people who need us most through text, uh, through telesupport, uh, through Zoom, and in a lot of ways, just ensuring that we can create a connection with the student where in some cases they don't have access to a cell phone or they don't have mm. access to a laptop at home. Uh, so we're having to be innovative to create consistency uh, for some of the young people that we are, we know we're worried uh, uh, when we think about who are those students who are on the cusp of potentially disengaging or dropping out because that's a process and it's not a single event. And this is a process that's going to be tough for us. Uh, and we. We know we have to be prepared when this uh, eventually becomes a re-engagement exercise for our CIS professionals. Yeah, you know, I, I was at a rally where parents and community leaders, educator, uh, education activists were talking about it's really a social component. It's, it's almost as though it's sad to say the education is secondary. It's more of the social component and trying to keep the in kids engaged that way. Is that uh, uh, what you're seeing as well? That is the right conversation to be having right now. And when we think about, you know, it's trite to say this, that we don't want to go back to normal. What we mean by that is that we have to reimagine the content of what the school experience is going to look like in the same way that we think about, uh, you know, protocols will change. My prediction is that in schools and at workplaces, you're going to see people uh, temperature being taken. We need to be able to do that same thing for young people. There's a way to do that with professionals who can unpack the, the trauma, the grief, the anxiety that students are feeling and put as much importance into those components so that we can ensure a student can begin learning because they cannot without ensuring that those pieces are in place first. And one important point you pointed out is that people need to have patience. Parents need to have patience. Students need to have patience with themselves and each other. Yeah, whenever there is a traumatic event, uh, a, a loss in the family or something like what we're dealing with with this pandemic, the first thing a young person will do will look to the adult, the grandpa, uh, the grandpa, the grandmother, the guardian, and wonder if they are OK. So what we have been advocating to a lot of the young people and their families is to first have patience with yourself, because that young person in these extraordinary times is going to be looking to you to gauge uh, whether they are going to be OK if you are OK. And because these are such tight times around the house or the apartment or with respect to budgets, they're particularly going to need the patience of, of their adults uh, in their lives, especially those who are working for communities and schools. All right, Ray, we could talk about this all morning, but we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you for spending some time with us this morning. For more information on communities and schools, you can check out their website, communitiesandschool.com.
www.hopeforhope.org. There's also a hotline number there. If you're experiencing some challenges, you might want to give that hotline number a call. The number is there on your screen. Mike is back with your seven-day forecast after the break.